Hello everyone, and today I'm going to show you how to make a respace, um, one that you'd kind of find in a frequent song, because uh, it's it's abrasive but it's more squelchy, and that's kind of the stuff I like. Um, so I'm going to first take you through the patch, and then I'll show you how I've used it, kind of how I've put effects on it and such. Um, but if you see this video is 20 minutes long or something, and you think I'm not watching that, most of it will be done in five minutes. So that's all good. Um, so first it sounds like this, this is just massive. And then the way I've used it in this song is like this. So the original massive patch is is basically, so I'll just take you through this very quickly and then we'll get on to all the other stuff. So Seeker is your first oscillator, or Seekada. Put your wave table position at 10 o'clock for intensity at just past halfway. And put, your, and put it on bend minus plus and amp all the way up. Pitch is going to be 36.09. Uh, the 09 because that's what gets the kind of wobbly thing, which I'll get to in more later. Um, and that's that done. You won't need oscillators 2 and 3, so you can turn them off or just mute them. Uh, modulation oscillator you will need. Um, ring mod is not doing anything. Phase is. Put it onto oscillator 1, which is what we just did. And put the pitch of the whole lot down to minus 24. And then set the phase amount up to 9, 10 o'clock, like that, or 10. Um, and then position, put that on 1 as well, and put it at 9, just below. And I'll get to the performance 7 later. Filter FM will be used, you're going to put it onto number 2, which you can set as a double notch now if you want, and put the FM of the filter to 10. Um, and then that's that done. Next up we've got noise, um, so set the type to bright noise, put the colour all the way up so it's a bit more hissy, and the amp you're going to leave at 9, um, we'll do some stuff to that as well. Feedback helps colour it a bit, so put it just, just a bit below post A. Then the sine shaper and the parabolic shaper, um, my two favourites of course, um, so put them on, sine and then parabolic, and put the dry wet and dry for every single thing onto just below 12 o'clock as you can see. Um, then you've got the filters, um, before we start looking at this bit we're going to do the sides, so for the way it works, do this for the series and parallel or serial parallel, put that three quarters of the way up, one quarter down. And then on the right, when the mix, put it to only one quarter up, so there. And then filter one, you can set your type to ban reject, which is probably one of my favourites. Um, put the cut off to 10 o'clock for now, put the ban width to also 10 o'clock, and your resonance to just a bit below halfway. Um, but that can work anywhere from there to there, really. Um, I quite like it a bit lower, just because it's a bit less um, obvious. Um, then. Filter 2 is a double notch, uh, my other favourite, put the cut off to 1 o'clock, middle one is useless, and the resonance put it to 9, 10 o'clock. And that's the filters. Next we're going to go on to the effects. Um, classic tube, uh, for effect 1, put the drywess and drive both to a bit below halfway, and then on effects 2 you've got a dimension expander. And for bases, you don't want to be widening it too much, so you've got dry wet at 10, 11 o'clock, and you've got just a little bit of size. Uh, the EQ, uh, put a bit on the high shelf, not much, like 1 o'clock. Leave the low shelf where it is, and the boost where it is, and then put the frequency all the way up. And we'll do some stuff with macros in a moment. Um, then on the OSC, make sure you've checked the restart via gate, otherwise it sounds like this. obvious which is better. Uh, then the vibrato, put the rate all the way up and then just put a touch on the depth. I mean you can barely see it's on at all but if I drag it down you can see it moves. So just like a few, not even one tick up, just like to the first maybe little line. Um, yeah you can see where it is now. Anyway, um, then on the voicing, um, four voices, mono rotate, legato triller, uh, turn on the away tail position, what's it do there, and put it up like a little bit, not much, again, just a little bit. Uh, re 
routing looks like this. One is our insert one is after filter one, insert two is when they join together, and the feedback goes from after the amp pan. And then we're going to get onto the modulation. So first things first, go onto a performer seven. Um, so click the sync and the restart and set your ratio to one over two. So it's going every half bar. And keep the amp all the way up, these like that. And then for the shape, click on your load curve and put this shape here in the first box and then drag everything else all the way down. So yeah. Um, and that's that. And then we need to assign this some stuff. So click the little crosshair, put it in the filter one, cut off, and drag it up to one o'clock. And then on the filter two for cutoff as well, drag it up so it's at three o'clock, as shown. And the next thing you're going to put it on is the phase and the position. Uh, phase, drag it up just a little bit, not very much at all. Uh, position, you're going to be a bit more drastic and you're going to drag it up to like um, 10, 11 ish. Um, but you can see. And then that is it for that. The other thing we use is the macros. So macro one controls the speed of the wobble. So the wobble is like. So you can see what I mean there. And that macro is assigned to the pitch of the seeker, not the modulation, just the seeker. And when you drag it up, the reason it makes a wobble sound is because um, when something's detuned slightly, the the phase kind of goes out of sync and then moves back into sync again. And every time it gets to a certain place in its waveform, um, it makes kind of a cool sound. And then as it moves in and out, it, that's the speed it goes at. So the more detune you have on it, um, so basically the more more pitch detune there is difference, the faster it will go. And that's how I've done it here. So speed, put it on there and turn it up to one, which is 100 cents. Um, and Next one is just an overall pitch, um, so get that and put it on both of them this time. So this one's going up 12, and that one's going up 12, so um, so put them both up to 12, and that means when you play a note and pitch it up. Other thing to notice is that when you pitch it up, um, the wobble speed gets faster again, um, and that's because when, you've, when you pitch something up an octave, the frequency doubles because um, it's logarithmic. So when you double the um, kind of the frequency of something, you're also doubling how many times it crosses over the phases going in and out. You know what I mean? So that's why it goes at double speed when you pitch it up an octave. And if you do it there, it will go um, up again. Um, it will go four times faster than the original. Um, so just bear that in mind if you're going to be doing any modulation modulating with this. And the last. Um, Macro we're going to use is macro three, which I've named board mod, and then we're going to assign that to. Let's go to the EQ first, just because why not? Um, on the boost, put it all the way down, and on the frequency, bring it down 180 degrees, so it's about 10 o'clock. Uh, next thing you're going to put that on is also on the band rejects band width, and turn it up to just above halfway. Um, the last thing you're going to put it on is the noise and you're going to put it on the amp and turn it down a bit so it's kind of a few ticks up and that's just because it, when you've got it all the way up uh, you're taking out the bass with this um, band object filter so the higher you can get a bit screechy so I've turned it down a bit and that's the massive patch so as a reminder this is what it sounds like and um, kind of cool and then I was going to take you through um, this project I've got, so we've quit that. There we go. So it sounds like this. It's made of the original patch, like I showed you earlier, um, which on its own sounds like that. It's got a few effects on it. Um, so just remind you that's what it looks like again. 
Um, very little changes, I think. There's nothing changed. Uh, firstly, you've got channel EQ, taking out the lows. You've got some distortion with this. You've got that on 33, 34%. Um, and your colour is like 60%, 68. Uh, then you've got another equaliser, which is kind of taking out the bass and the treble, and then you've got soft saturation all the way up. You've got an exciter, now this is very important. Um, this frequency is being modulated um, with some automation, I'll show you that in a moment. And that gives it a really scorchy, nice feel to it. And so the harmonics are on 101%, just to be different, and the colour is on it's colour one, so wouldn't make much difference, but um, anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'll show you the automation for that later. And you've got these two things, span, just showing what's going on, loudness. They're doing pretty much nothing, so you might as well turn them off. Um, then what I've done is that by itself, I did some, um, I did all the automation, as you can see from all these weird lines, and then I bounced it onto audio. Um, and then I, that's what I chopped up. But the automation, I've first got the pitch going. This is the pitch, um, which is the macro 2, which we looked at earlier. We've also got the mod, which is macro 3, um, which is doing some crazy stuff, as you can see. Um, but the values on that are generally quite low. They're not like going up a lot. Occasionally they do. Um, and actually, if you go really high, it sounds quite nice. But yeah, um, then you got the sauce fat and the color, which has gone absolutely mad. Um, so that's just wait, that one, this one that's just moving that around a lot. Um, then you've got this. It, this is just a high pass filter I use occasionally just to give it. Listen, at the first, the end of the first sound, you'll hear it. You can hear the high pass kick in there. Um, but that's simple enough, and it doesn't come come in a lot. And then the exciter, this is very important because it sounds so cool. Um, so if I turn the exciter off like this, sounds, sounds good but a bit boring. Turn it on. Um, and the way to deal with this is to have the automation remain generally high but occasionally bring it low. So here it hits 200 hertz at the end of this sound. And not only does that make it really loud, it also really thickens the sound up. And to compensate for the loudness I just mentioned, I turned it down with just some automation, which is cool. Uh, and that's all there is to say about that. Then, like I say, I bounced it down to audio just so I could chop it up. Um, and that sounds like this. No surprises there. Um, and then, then I, this is where I chopped it up. So I'm not going to show you how I chopped it up because that would take too long. But I've basically taken a bit of all of this and just chucked it in somewhere so it sounds nice. Beautiful. And that's got a load more effects on as you can see. Um, I think you can have unlimited in Logic. The only limits you have is CPU, really. Um, but yeah, I've got another one of these. The fatness is at zero and color is at 59. So it does affect the kind of the balancing with the EQ, but it doesn't actually do any distortion. Um, compressor. This is a site for side chaining purposes only. It's not doing anything to the sound. Other than that, it's set to bus one, which is the kick and snare. You see the output of these is bus one. Um, then you've also got an equalizer. Uh, bands 2 and 4 are only for mixing, so 200 hertz for the snare and 45, just 40, yeah 40 um, for the kick, so that's just a mid and cut through. Band 3, I wanted a few more mids, so I did that, and some soft saturation. Um, after that we had a stereo tool, which made it a bit more mono, um, because basses shouldn't be too stereo, a bit, but not too much. Then we got some reverb, um, not for very long, um, it's very very dense reverb, um, but it's only on the treble stuff, um, which is good. Um, so that's simple enough. We've got another exciter, this one isn't doing any automation, it's just to make the high end a bit more exciting. Um, 
we've got tremolo, which occasionally pops in. I did I did do some automation on this, but not nearly as much as the other one. Um, so that's going at one sixteenth. So semi quavers if you're from England. Um, then you've got our base, that free thing that Waze gave away for the Black Friday sales. I nabbed myself a copy, and it's being used to get this a bit more of a sub, um, which is good for this one. So we can, we can hear it kind of brings in a bit more bass. And then I've got two compressors um, just to limit it a bit. Um, you can see that they're doing quite a lot to the sound. Um, but compressing limiting basses and pads and big synths is a great way to make them sound bigger. So it's really worth doing. Uh, after that you've got another tremolo. This isn't as a really effect. It's kind of... Someone told me that the basses weren't kind of fitting with the song beat, so I put one of these on so that every beat of the bar it would kind of hit down and it would be like dum 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 dum. So it's only in 42% depth um, and it's going for every beat but I just put the full saw wave on it and did some edits with that. Um, then lastly there's an echo which only ever comes in at the end of the drop because over here we go back into the midsection. <laughs> So I've, I've just turned up the dry wet mix of that echo with some automation, um, which yeah, you can see there. Um, and speaking of automation, there isn't really anything else happening on this. I mean, there's a few lines. Um, some of it, it, there's a high pass filter, which comes in occasionally. Um, there's the tremolo depth, which I talked about. Um, Multi-parameter one of the EQ, what's that? Oh yeah, that's the high pass filter. And also, oh, a low pass filter, which just goes down for the end of that bit. So nothing you really need to take note of in the automation particularly. But that's all there is to the sound. Um, yeah, so that's my Neuro bass, which I made. And you may have noticed I'm now using Logic. Um, I finally took your advice saying, Dude, you should get Logic, and I did. And um, this is the first proper song I've made in it. I'm doing another one as well, um, and I might make an EP of like two or three tracks because um, that's why I've been so quiet for so long because I have been busy learning this. Um, and then that's all I really need to say. So please subscribe if you actually like this. Um, I might try and take a break from bass sounds and do a tutorial on a pad or something soon just because it's quite tiring doing this sort of video because it's all so complicated but yeah thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time thank you